Our closest star is the Sun, and it's one of many billions of stars in the galaxy we know as the Milky Way. Just like people, stars are born, they live, and then they die. Have any of you not played Jenga before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you play that? Right. This actual stack represents a star in the main part of its life cycle. We call it the main sequence. And that's the part where the star's forces inside it are stable. And that basically means that when it creates all its energy, like heat and light that you see coming from the sun, it pushes out with an outward pressure on the star. And it tries to blow the star apart. But the star's got so much mass that's trying to pull it together with gravity. That pulling together versus the pressure pushing out eventually gets in a balance. You get an equilibrium. Each one of these pieces, each one of these blocks represents a bit of energy. So the idea is to try and see how much energy we can release before it becomes unstable and everything comes falling to the floor. And then you lose. And I win. The energy released by the star through nuclear fusion creates an outward pressure. The force of gravity acting on the star's mass creates an inward pressure. In the main sequence, these two forces are balanced. This is the main sequence, and the star will spend about 90% of its life doing this, just slowly giving off energy. And as long as gravity is balanced, we have equilibrium. Oh, 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 wow. See, as you can see, it's taken a while, isn't it? Different stars do this at different rates. So big stars use up all their energy really quickly. They just kind of throw it all out, eject it. There we go. Energy's gone. Boom. The smaller stars can stay on the main sequence for like a billion years, maybe even billions of years. So our sun is a few billion years old and it's in its main sequence. No, no, no. No, no. no. Right, it's looking very precarious here. The star's about to end its life, I think. It's inevitable, you can't avoid it. All stars eventually run out of the fuel they're burning. It's just a question of when. <laughs> Another gravitational collapse of the core. Gravity wins! <laughs> that marks the end of a star. It's released so much energy that now it can't balance the gravity that's pulling it together. And eventually, inevitably, gravity wins. And that happens to every single star. The gas and dust that is released when stars reach the end of their life then goes on to form new stars and solar systems. So in a sense, by learning about the death of a star, we're also learning about the birth of a star. And that's because all stars go through a life cycle. Stars form when enough dust and gas from space is pulled together by gravitational attraction. As this happens, the gravitational energy is converted into heat energy and the temperature rises. This is called a protostar. Once the temperature gets high enough, hydrogen in the star undergoes nuclear fusion. This is when it enters a long stable period, which we saw earlier playing Jenga. The fate of a star depends on how much matter it contains. At the end of its main sequence, a low-mass star, like our Sun, will expand into a red giant, then a planetary nebula, before contracting into a white dwarf, and eventually a black dwarf. A really massive star will expand into a super red giant, before exploding in a supernova. What's left will either be a dense neutron star, or, if the star is really massive, it will end its life as a black hole. So you getting it? Maybe a rap will help. It starts as a big cloud of dust and gas, but then the gravity takes over when it starts to contract. The gases are squeezed together as the masses attract to make the core get hotter from the steady collapse. The hot gases expand with an outward pressure that can balance the gravity that's holding the star together. Then at a certain temperature, the core will start to enter into nuclear fusion of hydrogen at the center. They shine like beacons entering the main sequence. The larger the mass, the more energy they're releasing. And as the core's depleting all the energy it's keeping, the pressure pushing outward from the core begins to weaken. 
time Gravity takes over now Beginning to squeeze The core shrinks under the weight Thus increasing the heat For nine tenths of its life The main sequence has been Its main home Now it's growing And it's ready to leave A low mass star Can become a red giant Then a planetary nebula Is next in line Where you'll find a white dwarf That was left behind Before dimming into a black dwarf Over time We get a red super giant From a star that's large A supernova marks death Of these larger stars They leave a neutron star In the aftermath And if not A black hole is thought to end their path. This life cycle of stars is an essential component of the universe. At its heart is the process that produces almost all the elements on Earth. So every atom of carbon that makes up my body was actually born in a dying star. So really, we're all made of stardust.